When you download this template, you will see two zip files. The social media template zip file is the folder that holds the Premiere Pro project. And the social media export presets zip file holds all of the export presets. Let's unzip both files and start with the social media template. When you go inside the social media template folder, you'll see five subfolders, a project folder where the Premiere Pro project lives, a footage folder where all of your footage will be imported from, a graphics folder that will hold all of your graphic assets like lower thirds, title cards, transitions, images, and logos, an audio folder where you place your VO, music, and sound effects in, and an exports folder where you would put all of your final exports in. Now let's go back to our project folder and click on the Premiere Pro project. I'm currently editing in Premiere Pro 2025, but I made this template in Premiere Pro 2022 so that users who are working in Premiere Pro 2022, 2023, or 2024 can still use this template. You will be able to use this in future versions of Premiere Pro as well. I'm going to open this in Premiere Pro 2025 and I get this pop-up telling us that we need to convert this project to the 2025 version since this was created in the 2022 version. Choose where you want this to be saved. I'm going to save this to the project folder and I'm going to add 2025 to the end of this and I'm going to press OK. Our project will appear and if your layout looks different than mine, it is going off of your editing workspace layout. To reset your layout, go to the window tab, go to workspaces, then click on reset saved layout. If we go to the project panel, we have six bins. The first bin in our project is labeled cuts. And this is where the sequences you will be working on should live. We don't have any sequences in here yet because we haven't started our edit. When you are editing, you will put your most recent cut in this bin and place the previous cuts you worked on in the previous edits bin to keep your project organized. The footage bin is where our footage will live. Graphics is where your title cards, lower thirds, transitions, logo, graphic images, and other template files should live. Audio is where your music, sound effects, and voiceovers should live. I'm going to skip down to the final deliveries bin, and this is where you would place your final sequence in. Now let's focus on the templates bin. This is where all of our pre-built sequences live. We have pre-built sequences here for Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, X, and YouTube Shorts. And these were all built according to the recommended settings for each platform. And some of these platforms allow for different types of video to be uploaded. Instagram, for example, allows for in-feed videos, reels, and stories. Stories and reels will only be nine by 16 videos but in-feed videos allow for different orientations like square, portrait, and landscape. Landscape is a 16 by nine ratio. Portrait is a nine by 16 ratio, and square is a one to one ratio. The next thing that's important to note is frame rate. All these platforms allow for 23.98, 29.97, and 25 frames per second. So whichever frame rate you shot at and want to deliver in is the one you should choose. So in looking at Facebook, you'll see two bins, one for Facebook stories and one for Facebook videos. Facebook stories are in the specs of 1080 by 1920, also known as nine by 16. And Facebook videos are in the specs of 1920 by 1080, also known as 16 by nine. When we open up the bin for Facebook stories, you'll see three additional bins, one for 23.98 frames per second, one for 25 frames per second, and one for 29.97 frames per second. And in each one of these bins is a sequence that is based on the recommended settings for Facebook. So if I open this sequence here, this is a 1080 by 1920 sequence with a frame rate a 23.98 frames per second. For Facebook videos, we have a landscape and portraits bin. The landscape bin has sequences in a horizontal ratio with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and 1280 by 720. And the portrait bins are in the vertical ratio with a resolution of 720 by 1280 and 1080 by 1920. For Instagram, we have in-feed videos, Instagram reels, and Instagram stories. 
For end feed videos, we have landscape, portrait, and square. The landscape bin has sequences and a horizontal ratio with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. The portrait bin has sequences in the vertical ratio with a resolution of 1080 by 1350. The square bin has sequences in the one to one ratio, which is a resolution of 1080 by 1080. The Instagram Reels bin has sequences in the 1080 by 1920 ratio. And the Instagram Stories bin has sequences in a 1080 by 1920 ratio as well. For Snapchat, you have sequences in the vertical ratio with a resolution of 1080 by 1920. For TikTok, you have sequences in the vertical ratio with a resolution of 1080 by 1920. For X, also known as Twitter, we have a bin for in-feed videos. The landscape bin has sequences in the horizontal ratio with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and 1280 by 720. The portrait videos are in the vertical ratio with a resolution of 720 by 1280 and 1080 by 1920. The square bin has sequences in the one-to-one -one ratio with a resolution of 720 by 720 and 1080 by 1080. For YouTube, you have sequences in the vertical ratio with a resolution of 2160 by 3840, which is 4K, 1080 by 1920, and 720 by 1280. I'm going to import some clips into the project. And before you start editing and placing clips in the sequence, I highly recommend making a duplicate of the sequence you want to work in so that if you need a new sequence from scratch, you will always have the previous pre-built sequences here. You can duplicate the sequence by either right-clicking on it and go to duplicate or use the keyboard shortcut shift command forward slash on a Mac or control shift forward slash on a Windows computer. Then drag and drop the duplicated sequence to your cuts folder and then rename it. When you drag a clip into the timeline, you will get this pop-up saying that the clip does not match the sequence settings. When working in this template, you always want to press keep existing settings as this sequence is built for the final output. If we decided to change the sequence settings, it would switch the sequence settings based on the clips you have imported, and we don't want that. In a situation where you shot at a higher resolution than you want to export in, like 4K footage in a 1080 sequence, there's an easy fix for that. You can either right click on the clip in your timeline and click on fit to frame or go to the Premiere Pro tab, go to settings, media, and go to default media scaling and change it from none to fit to frame. If you're working in previous versions of Premiere Pro and don't see fit to frame, it would be set to frame size. This will automatically fit your footage to the dimension size of your sequence without pixelating your footage. To export, have the media you want to export in your timeline. Make sure you set your in and out points in the timeline. Then go to File, Export, Media, or press the keyboard shortcut Command-M on a Mac or Control-M on a Windows computer. The export settings will appear and we're gonna go to the Preset tab and click on the icon that has three dots and go to Import Presets. Browse to the template export presets folder and select the first preset and then hold shift and select the last preset to select them all at once and then press open. Go to the format tab and change the format to H.264. Then in the preset tab, all of the presets we imported should be here. If you don't see them, go down to more presets. The preset manager window will appear then go to custom presets and in the search bar, type in the desired output. I'm exporting this for YouTube shorts. So I would type in SSC YouTube shorts and then select SSC YouTube 1080p and press okay. Choose your location where you want this file to be exported to. I'm going to send this to my downloads folder. Press export, then the export tab will appear and when your media has exported, it will appear in your desired location. We are giving 60% off to the first 100 people that purchase this template. Just use promo code SSC60. The link will be in the description below. Like and subscribe for more Premiere Pro tutorials, and I'll see you 
on the next one.